The Boston Bruins have made some great trades over the past few seasons that are really paying off in this run in 2022-23. But we need to talk about a trade that didn't happen and how impactful it's been for the Boston Bruins, and that is keeping Jake DeBrusque. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be. Today is Wednesday, March 22nd, and I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your day every single day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts, including YouTube. Please smash that subscribe button. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more by visiting fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. On today's episode, we are going to talk about last night's win over the Ottawa Senators. We're going to talk about how important Jake DeBrusque is to this team, among other players, and take a quick look at the Eastern Conference playoff picture and who the Bruins could be in line to play in the opening round. Want to remind you quickly that you can find the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Locked NHL Bruins. And you can find me, my dad jokes, and hockey tweets at Ian C. McLaren. Now, just one year ago, Jake DeBrusque was in the midst of a very public trade request that may or may not have been. Uh, resolved prior to the trade deadline. There was a lot of talk before last season that, or sorry, before last season's trade deadline that he was indeed going to be dealt because he made that trade request public and didn't seem like he wanted to yeah, remain in black and gold. Instead, on March 21st, 2022, so one year ago yesterday, Jake DeBrusque signed a two-year, $8 million contract with the Bruins, average annual valuation of $4 million. Now, there was a thought at the time that maybe he was signing so that teams could have some term and cost certainty when they grabbed him prior to the deadline, as it turned out. He was retained and has become an integral part of Boston's success this season. DeBrusque scored the game-winning goal last night on just an amazing feed from Brad Marchand, which we'll talk about here uh, coming up. Um, He has been electric since returning from injury that he suffered at the Winter Classic, uh, he has 23 goals, 22 assists for 45 points. He's already got a career high in points, 45 in 52 games. And he's four back of the 27 goals he scored in 2018-2019. Currently on pace for 27 if he plays the remaining nine games. And hopefully he's able to get that career high because he really does deserve it. Of course, he missed 17 games with that injury. And it's not just the scoring that I'm impressed with when it comes to Jake DeBrusque. It's his aggressiveness with and without the puck. You saw him get to the net there to get that beautiful feed from Marshan and his finishing ability, but he's also out there killing penalties. 
He had an unreal back check during last night's game to disrupt an Ottawa scoring chance. He's out there in the final minutes preserving leads. He has become a complete all-around player, and there was a lot of talk prior to the trade deadline about Boston going out and getting a Patrick Kane or or some sort of game-breaking forward. Jake DeBrusque is that guy for the Boston Bruins, and you can't understate his importance to the team. Um, There were times in the past where there was consistency issues or the effort wasn't there every night. And, you know, there's still some shifts. Everybody has those. But he is so important to this team. And it's a credit to Don Sweeney that he didn't trade him for pennies on the dollar, that he got him to resign for a couple of years at a very team-friendly $4 million uh, AAV. It remains to be seen what his next contract will look like if he wants to test free agency or if he does want to move on. But at the moment, he seems happy. He's thriving. And, you know, even after last night, he said there was a little stretch where he was trying to find his feet, getting back from injury, being too hard on himself, limiting what he does out there. But he's just trying to get his feet moving and go to the hard areas. And that pass from Brad Marchand was all world. He described it after last night's game. One of those things where he saw him, he was just trying to get open, flew through a couple guys and the pass picture perfect. And Marchand, or sorry, DeBrusque said he was happy to be able to finish that for Marchand. And as for the finishing move, he said it was just more instincts than anything coming in with some speed um he likes to usually tuck at five hole but he was able to get it all the way around mads sogard for the goal which stood as the game winner last night we're going to talk more about this game talk about marchand's impact and how he's feeling following his double hip surgery last off season but first i want to talk about Today's sponsor, which is the FanDuel Sportsbook. FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook, and it's a perfect time to get on board because the NCAA tournament is heating right up. And new customers get a no-sweat first bet of up to $1,000 in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app, which is safe, secure, super easy to use, and you can bet on everything from money lines to point scorers and threes drained. FanDuel lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. Don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet of up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA and of locked on your favorite team every single day. Let's get back to last night's game. And the penalty kill was especially on point last night. Huge in the dying minutes when the Bruins uh, were faced with a Charlie Coyle holding penalty. And the Bruins had to kill off that penalty with the extra man pulled. Derek Forbort out of the lineup, but the Bruins still managed to kill off all the penalties last night, keeping the Ottawa attack at bay, especially in the dying minutes, with some great work from DeBrusque and Brad Marsh and Patrice Bergeron as well. The Senators went 0 for 3 on the power play. The Bruins, conversely, went 1 for 4, thanks to a David Krejci goal on a 5 on 3 opportunity. Um, It was a whack home goal by Krejci off a Hampus Lindholm rebound. And um, just 14, 4 minutes and 19 seconds later, I should say, DeBrus scored on that dazzling move 
to secure the victory. The Bruins were out there blocking shots. They're playing hard. Next, uh, for the next guy, not just for themselves, Jim Montgomery said, and as part of the culture here, sounds like a broken record, but those guys in the locker room play the right way. They get rewarded for it, and that's why they have the record they have, which is now at an astonishing 54, 11, and 5. Brad Marchand, after the game, said at this level, it's the little details that really go a long way. The fact that Jake drove to the middle uh, and Patrice Bergeron also drove to the net on that play to attract the defense, open things up for DeBrusque. Um, That's what part of makes Bergeron a special player, Marshawn said, and what makes this team so special as well. They do the little things that get the job done. If Bergeron decided to go above Marshawn or go for a drop pass, the lane's not there for DeBrusque. Prime example, Marshawn said, of why Bergeron is the best. Um, DeBrusque has scored in three straight games, four of his last six. After a stretch of seven straight without a goal, that came after three consecutive goals scored upon his return from a six weeks absence due to injury. And he's finding his game, as is Brad Marchand, who's playing some of his best hockey of the season. He's registered a point in three straight games, six assists over that span. And again, like he said on this podcast, like he said before and since, he's still building his game back following that offseason double hip surgery. Montgomery thinks he's found his groove, making a lot of plays again. He's attacking defensemen's feet, pulling up, reading off their joints if their ankles or knees are turned one way. He's going the other way. Uh, Montgomery loved the way Jake drove to the weak side post. Amazing pass, quick hands to make that move. Um, and while Martian doesn't believe he's quite up to his standard, he's still playing at a point per game pace. 20 goals, 42 assists in 62 games. Even last night, he said he wouldn't say he's there yet, but definitely feeling better about his game when those bounces are coming. He said it's frustrating, especially... When he's expected to produce, he puts a lot of pressure on himself to do that. And the more he's moving his feet, the more things open up. Everybody is moving, supporting each other. When one or two guys are feeling good, they all kind of feed off that. And they're all feeling pretty good, confidence-wise. It's such a powerful thing in all sports, he said. But speaking about the Bruins, when the confidence is high, it seems like you can make any play. The puck will find the back of the net, and you can feel that on the roster right now. And of course, goaltending is a huge factor. Allmark made 39 saves, including 21 in the second period, hitting 35 wins on the season. He was outstanding, and he needed to be because the Bruins gave up a lot of good looks, a lot of odd man rushes, and he bailed them out a little bit last night. But the Bruins were able to lock it down in the third period, allowing just four shots, despite Ottawa being on the power play for the final two minutes of the game, which included the extra attacker. Uh, the PK was forechecking well. The defenseman did a really good job of pressuring the next pass. They pushed them outside of the middle of the ice, and the PK was completely on point last night. Three for three. They're 11 for 12 since Derek Forbort went down with an injury last week. And if Forbort's not their best penalty killer, he's one of the best outside of Bergeron. Orlov stepped up. Lindholm's been playing well. And again, Jake DeBrusque out there making an impact as well. The Bruins blocking shots out there, getting some shot suppression going, 
And uh, let's see who led the team in blocks last night. Well, Carlo had a couple. Grizzly had a couple. Orlov had a couple on the back end. Pasternak with a couple blocks to lead all forwards as well. Bunch of guys getting in those lanes. And of course, there was a good puck movement on their own opportunities, and they were rewarded with the one power play goal uh, scored by David Krejci. I loved Tyler Bertuzzi's game once again, so close to scoring his first as a member of the Boston Bruins. He had six shots on goal in 18 minutes and 22 seconds of ice time. It's coming for him. He had a couple hits as well, uh, and I'm so ready for him to hit the back of the net. Pasternak leading the way with seven shots on goal for the Bruins. And actually, according to NHL stats, Allmark made 40 saves, 976 save percentage to improve his league leading numbers. Next up is a game against the Montreal Canadiens tomorrow night. We'll preview that on tomorrow's show. Coming up after the break, we're going to take a look at the Eastern Conference wildcard picture. But first, a quick word about Indeed. If you're hiring, you need Indeed because Indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. With Instant Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates with resumes on Indeed that match your job descriptions, and you can invite them to apply right away. Plus, you only pay for quality applications that meet your must-have requirements. Indeed makes it easy to hire great talent. According to Comscore, Indeed is the number one job site worldwide. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash LockedOn. The offer is valid through March 31st. Go to Indeed.com slash LockedOn to claim your $75 credit before March 1st. That's Indeed.com slash LockedOn. Terms and conditions apply. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. All right, let's quickly take a look at the Eastern Conference playoff picture, which seems to change every single night. Right now, the two wildcard spots are occupied by the New York Islanders, who defeated Toronto by a score of 7-2 to two last night. They have a three-point lead on the Florida Panthers, who are in the second wildcard spot. Pittsburgh Penguins hanging on one point back of the Panthers, but with a game in hand. They actually have a better point percentage, 557 compared to 556 for the Panthers. So it's very tight there. The Panthers, though, have a much... Well, not much better, but they have a better goal differential. They're at plus nine compared to minus four. So right now, as it stands, Boston would be matched up with the Florida Panthers in round one. Florida's coming in hot. They're seven, two and one over their last 10. Uh, but I believe they lost last night to the Philadelphia Flyers by a score of six to three. So that's really not much to write home about. Ottawa losing last night. They're five points back. Washington, uh, five points back of the Panthers. And they've played one more game. So those guys pretty much out of the race. Those are the three teams really in contention right now. The Rangers at 92 points. They're not in danger of being caught by the Islanders. Um, Tampa Bay, 90 points. They're not in danger of being caught by the Panthers in the Atlantic. So it's probably going to be the Islanders, the Panthers, or the Penguins. My preference would be the Penguins. They're extremely vulnerable. Um, they're goaltending incredibly suspect. We know the Panthers won the President's Trophy last season. They're a bit of a different team, of course, with Matthew Kachuk in there. Uh, no Mackenzie Weger. I don't really believe in Sergei Bobrovsky too much. The team that does scare me is the New York Islanders uh, with Ilya Sorokin in net. 
and they've been making this playoff push without arguably their best player in Matt Barzell. If he can get healthy and find some chemistry with Bo Horvat, that could be a dangerous team. I'd much rather them knock out the winner of the Metro than of the top team, which would be the Boston Bruins. Uh, not that they would knock them out, but that's the wildcard team that scares me the most. And we'll talk about these three teams more in depth as the playoff picture gets a bit clearer. But my preference would be Pittsburgh, Florida, followed by uh, the New York Islanders. And if Washington or Ottawa moves up, so be it. Those teams are not great either. There you go. Consider yourselves officially caught up on all things black and gold here on the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. Thank you to Don Sweeney for not trading Jake DeBrusque. Uh, Brad Marchand slowly, surely getting back to his normal self, which is crazy because of um, how good he's been so far, averaging a point per game. If he can hit another level, if Bertuzzi can... Start hitting the back of the net. Taylor Hall gets healthy. Nick Foligno comes back. This team could have four very effective lines and by all of rights should be extremely successful in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Bruins have uh, 10 games remaining on the schedule. No, that's not true at all. The Bruins have uh, 12 games remaining on the schedule. They need nine wins. Out of those 10 games to capture the all-time wins record. Talked yesterday about how that could happen. Probably doesn't matter, but still would be pretty cool for them to achieve that feat. On tomorrow's episode, we will preview a game against the Montreal Canadiens. Might open up the mailbag. Haven't done that. If you have any questions, hit me up at ENC McLaren or Locked NHL Bruins. And we'll bring you all the latest on the black and gold here on the Locked On Boston Bruins Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day. Take care, friends. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Talk to you again tomorrow.